Okay, so I got a request from a student today to explain drawing a, a heating curve, which actually isn't right here. Uh, I thought it would be there. It, attempted not yet learned. I did see later he went back and, and figured it out, but he spent an hour on it, which is a long time for a topic. Um, so let's go here. I think it's in this current objective, drawing a heating curve. There it is right there. You see it? Drawing a heating curve. I've already prepared my whiteboard, so let's go there. Uh, but I'm going to go back. There were, there were several prerequisite topics. So I'm going to start with, with, um, with uh, I'm going I'm to go back to this one. I'm going to start with some terms, okay? So the, the topic is called drawing a heating curve, okay? Huh. Sounds complicated. And it, it sort of is, all right? So first of all, I'm going to talk about drawing a curve, all right? So the first drawing, because we, if we do not to draw a curve, then, then uh, drawing a heating curve is not going to be so bad. So first of all, let me remind you that you've seen things like this before, right? We saw this in high school algebra, x and y. And if I told you, now watch this, this is, I think, going to be um, sort of interesting or, or accessible, I should say. As x increases... So does y, all right? So if I told you that as x increases, so does y, what would you expect the heating curve to look like, or the curve, the curve to look like here? As x increases, so does y, as x increases. So as we come along here, and don't forget, we're talking about ordered pairs, right? x and y, how do you spell x and y? x comma y is gonna be drawn somewhere here, right? So let's say the first x, y is here, and as X goes, it increases, so does Y. So let's say it's probably going to be here, right? And as X increases even more, so does Y, because that's what this statement says, right? And so it's going to be here, right? Can you see that? As X increases, so does Y. All right, so that's drawing, that's drawing a curve. As X increases, so does Y. And you have to appreciate that now before you can do uh, this topic, that that's what we mean by drawing a curve. All right, so let's now get rid of this and let's go here. I try to draw legibly, okay? Drawing a heating, oops, push the wrong button, just a second here. Curve part one, okay? So let's go back to, well, you can say the same color we had before. Messy handwriting, okay. And here's what we're gonna talk about. Now here's what our heating curve is look like. Heat and temperature, where heat is gonna be in kilojoules or joules or calories, and temperature is gonna be in what? Say it out loud. If you're watching this video, you need to need to participate. Say that, what's the unit of this temperature gonna be? Say it out loud. If you said degrees Celsius or Kelvin, you're good. If you said degrees Fahrenheit, that's fine. If you said BTUs, that's wrong. Right? But you got to be thinking about this. What is going on here? Because you, you can't draw this stuff unless you, you, you understand what these axes are. So a heating curve is going to look like this. As what happens to the temperature of a substance, right? And we've got a mystery substance. Let's say it's in a box. You don't know anything about it, okay? Here's just a box. It's inside there, and the box is closed. You can't tell. So this is you. Your eyes are shut. You're frustrated, so your eyebrows are doing that, okay? You can't even see inside there. So let's talk about any substance. As the heat goes into the substance, we're, we're, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put heat into the substance, and we're usually gonna do it with something like, let's say, a flame, okay? Or a heating pad. Can you see a candle here? We're gonna, heat, we're gonna put heat into that. We're gonna do it with a flame. What's gonna happen to the temperature? What is gonna happen? You need to guess. Very important that you guess. So let's say we start here with zero heat. Or I guess zero would be here. Uh, let's do that. Let's put the zero here, okay? Let's start here. Before you light the candle, let's say the temperature is there. And let's say the temperature is room temperature. This is gonna be about maybe, maybe 22 degrees Celsius, okay? So as I put heat into it, what's gonna happen to the temperature? It's gonna go up, right? So as I'm putting heat into it, the temperature goes up. And that's what happens, right? So the heat, the first heating curve we're interested in is gonna look like that. Okay, that's a heating curve.
from part one. That is if we know nothing about the substance. And one thing I did make once, that's not a leaf, by the way, that's a, that's a flame. But the one thing I did um, imp in, um, imply about this was that there was no phase change. Okay, no phase change. In other words, it doesn't melt or evaporate or anything like that. If there's no phase change, the heating curve, the first part of the heating curve is gonna look like that. All right, now let's get to this, let's draw another one. I know this is long and painful, but I think actually, no, I think it's not painful. I think this is what you need. If, if you don't know what a heating curve is, how to draw a ske sketchy heating curve, I think you need to step through it step by step. And that's what we're doing here now, okay? Do another one and we're gonna put heat in here and what are the units for heat? Say it out loud. Kilojoules or joules, right? Or calories. And this is gonna be temperature. And what are the units for temperature? Please say it out loud. All right, degrees Celsius, okay? Now, let's say in this case, we're only talking about during a phase change during a phase change, okay? That means you've got a bucket of water, and you have some ice balls in here, chunks of ice, okay? It's very important now that you know what is meant by the term phase change. I guess it would be like that, right? Because ice floats. Because you get this ice in there, and you're putting a flame. That's a much better candle, isn't it? Well, that's not a big, who, who knows if a candle looks like that. All right, so anyway, you got these little drips of wax coming down the edge. All right, so you get this flame on here. <laughs> that's ridiculous, I know. I'm sorry for the ugly candle. All right, so you got this flame and you're, you're, you're putting heat into the, to the water, okay? So if this is the case, I mean, this is during a phase change, so I chose a phase change. The phase change I chose for this is just melting, okay? What's the temperature in the beginning? If it's water, what's the temperature? It's zero, right? Okay, as I put heat into that, during the phase change, during the phase change, what happens to the temperature? Nothing. Nothing happens to the temperature, right? Because the definition of phase change means that the phase change is the temperature at which the two phases it coexist, okay? So both the liquid and the solid are at zero degrees Celsius. All right, that's very important. This is probably the hard one here, okay? Last one I'm guessing is, is, is sort of uh, easier, okay? So this one, I don't know, that's hard. All right, let's go on now to the next one. Let's come here and do it again. Let's suppose now after we've got our phase change, Okay, we're gonna put more heat into it. Temperature, what's the units of the heat? Kilojoules, what's the units of the temperature? I hope you say it out loud. Degrees Celsius, okay. Now let's go back here and let's say we've melted all of our ice. This is after the phase change. We now just have water. Getting better with these, these uh, flames, aren't I? All right, so we're putting more heat into it, but the ice is gone. This is after the phase change, okay? So what's gonna happen here? What's gonna happen is, uh, so, so let's suppose the instant after the last piece of ice goes, it's gonna be here, right? It's gonna be at zero. But what's gonna happen to it is I keep putting heat into that water. It's gonna go up again, right? Until what? Until it gets to the boiling point. All right, and then we get another phase change. All right. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Now um, it's a little fast, but but you may uh, want to go back and 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 uh, find a, a good chemistry textbook or Wikipedia page on heating curves and read it. That would be fine. It would be not a bad idea. Let's go here now and let's go to the question. Okay. So the question says, where am I here? Here, question says, substance X is known to exist at one atmosphere in the solid 
liquid and vapor phase. Solid, liquid, and vapor phase. Oh, wow. Okay, so I better give myself, excuse me, another layer. And solid, one atmosphere, solid, liquid, and vapor phase. I'm going to get rid of this for a second. And I'm going to draw, we've been using a uh, curve as red, haven't we? Okay. At one atmosphere, let's say, I, don't, I can't even quite tell what's going on yet. One atmosphere, and that's the triple point. How do you spell triple? At one atmosphere is the triple point. Okay, wow. Okay, so let's go back here now and say one atmosphere, the substance is known to exist in the solid, oh, liquid, uh oh, or phase, it's or, it says or vapor phase, depending on the temperature. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the triple point. Yeah, because it's, it's it could be any three, you see that? Depending on temperature. All right, so additionally, the values of these other properties have been determined. The melting point is at 60 degrees Celsius. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna say the melting point is at 60 degrees Celsius. So the melting is at 60 degrees Celsius. And the boiling point is 120 degrees Celsius. Right? Okay, let's go back here now. Um, the enthalpy of fusion is 11 kilojoules per mole. What is that? 11 kilojoules per mole. That's the enthalpy of fusion. So let me go back here now. If this is in kilojoules, I'm gonna, we're gonna say now kilojoule, oh, kilograms, pardon me. Let's go kilojoules. We're gonna add kilojoules but we're gonna say kilojoules per mole. That's the heat added, okay? Heat added per mole now, right? It's kilojoules per mole. This is in temperature in degrees Celsius. And this is heat per mole. Can you read my writing? Heat per mole, kilojoules per mole, and degrees Celsius, okay? I'm setting myself up for this, make it easy for myself, okay? So, uh, enthalpy of fusion is 11 kilojoules per mole. And the enthalpy of vaporization is 40 kilojoules per mole. I'm going to need these on the next page, right? And my heat capacity, aha, okay. Heat capacity for solid is 31 joules per Kelvin mole. Heat capacity for liquid is 23 and heat capacity for vapor is 33, okay? Um, almost there now. I think I've gotten everything written down, don't I? Yeah, I do. Oh, and the density, okay. Well, I'm not sure if I'll need that. Let's look back, let's, let's read the question first, okay? Now, suppose a small sample of X at 50 degrees Celsius is put into an evacuated flask. And heated at a constant rate. All right, so we're, we're start at 50 degrees Celsius. Let's come back here. Get rid of that. I'm going to go to black now. Starting at 50 degrees Celsius, that's about maybe here. Okay. Pardon me if that's not a, a good estimate. 60, 70, 80, 90. If I go halfway, that would be 90, I guess. So, yeah, that's a pretty decent estimate. Okay. Start at 50. And we go here. It's put into an evacuated flask and heating at a constant rate of 10 kilojoules per mole of heat. Graph the temperature of the sample that would be observed during the experiment. All right. So if it's if it's heated at a constant rate of 10 kilojoules per mole, then what that means is uh, what that means is let me go here. It means we're going to be coming this way, right? And so what's going to happen is. Uh, this is going to go, the, the, what was the, what was the phase? 
a small sample, oh, it's put, if it's 50, then it's gonna be, well, I don't even have to look at the phase. If it's 50, then it's gonna be here, right? When that's, therefore, that's, that's, that's gonna be a solid, right? So it's gonna be, the heat capacity, it's gonna go up until it hits the, until it hits the melting point. Then it's gonna go along here until it, it completely melts. Then it's gonna go up until it hits the melting point, right? And it's gonna go here until it gets to completely vapor, right? And then it's gonna go up again, okay? So that's the heating curve. I didn't leave myself enough room over there to work on it. Now, what's the slope of this line? You might be asked uh, in this, what's the slope? Can I use like y is equal to mx plus b? What's the slope of that line? What's the slope of that line? What's the slope of that line? Right, well y is equal to temp, y is the temperature, right? That's what this axis is over here, is equal to the slope times uh, the heat added. So I'm gonna say, what, what symbol are we using for heat? Let's just use H. Uh, and then we're gonna say plus B, but we're not gonna talk about the y-intercept because it doesn't, doesn't matter. We don't, know what that, we don't know what that is. Well, let's just say plus B. All right, well, if that's the case, what's the rate at which this is going up? And the answer is right here. Those are the slopes. Okay, so you're gonna need that when you're, when you're um, putting the answer in for Alex, because I think Alex is gonna be asking you specific numbers. So this is a challenge. I, I've touched on what I think is the most abstract part of it, but now what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go in and figure out if the temperature is 50, okay? Uh, no, I'm sorry, if the, if the, if the change, so you know that slope is equal to y2 minus, it's rise over run, right? x2 minus x1. And so that's gonna, I think, you know what y2 over y, uh, y2 minus y1, it's gonna be 60 minus 50, right? And then x2 and x1 is what you're gonna have to figure out in order to figure out what that point is. All right, in order to figure out what, what, uh, what both those points are. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the math with you on that right now. I'm just going to going to leave it at that. But if you need if you want more on that, uh, let me know. This is this is a linear equation essentially. Okay, good luck.